Hello everyone, welcome back to another Dylan's Top 200 Film Reviews. So, as I stated before, I made, uh, I made a list of my Top 200 Films, um, which I didn't say last week, you can check that out in my letter in letterbox. Um, in my letterbox, um, I updated from 101, 101 Films to two, Top 200 Films because I missed so many films. Um, so yeah, so I'm going to be doing film reviews of those uh, 200 and I'm doing it in chronological order of when they came out, you know, like from the late 30s um, to the present. So this is the second review, um, film number two. And the film we'll be talking about today is the 1941 classic film, Citizen Kane. All right, so Citizen Kane, uh, directed and starring um, Orson Welles, um, written by... Um, script was written by Herman J. Mankiewicz. Um, so Citizen Kane. Um, Citizen Kane is about a businessman, newspaper tycoon, um, Charles Foster Kane, who, who died, who dies, right? who dies, and the last word he ever says is Rosebud. So throughout the course of the film, all the big newspaper publishers and just and the and the media just like just going into trying to find out what Rosebud means, because because so they go interview person to person that had impact on Kane's life, uh, and then through the course of the film we see flashbacks of Kane when he was a young boy to to a uh, to man like um rags to riches story in some way um. And of course, uh, the film the film was inspired by the life of William Randolph Hearst, who was a big, big uh, newspaper t uh, business tycoon man. So Herman J. Mankiewicz, uh, which the new David Fincher film Mank is about, which is about uh, him, played by Gary Oldman, just writing the script for Citizen Kane. Um, they took major like stuff from his life, and, um, and I heard he wasn't okay with that. Uh, but um, so yeah, so Citizen Kane. You know, like Orson Welles, who who like uh, who directed it. He's also he stars in it. It was his first film ever. Um, and, you know, just throughout the film, just seeing all these different things. We see him as a young boy who gets sent away to become a very successful person. We see him like you know, like operating newspapers. Like you know, like as a young man, he gets kicked out of every like prestige. Uh, college and school in the nation and then he goes on to bigger things he has a wife um you know he becomes successful um becomes a leader of some sorts becomes a politician then he doesn't and then he gets into a um affair um and then that kind of ruins his career and then he's starting to just starts forcing um like the the woman he had an affair with like become like a singer but she's bad he loses his friends um he starts crumbling downhill and then, of course, we can go back and forth in the present, just interviewing all these people, saying that, like, uh, like for Kane, like, I knew Kane, I didn't like him, and some of that. And it's just, it's just, and people say this is, like, considered one of the greatest films of all time. And so, to be honest, I haven't, I haven't seen it till recently. Um, and I, and I know, I know, I know, like, like, where, where, where have you been? <laughs> but I did see it eventually, and, um, and I love it. I thought it was great. Like I see why people love it. Like the the lighting, like especially this is like one of the greatest films ever that have good lighting. Like like the shadows and the silhouettes is just so good. Um the acting is great. Orson Welles is a great job. Like uh, some people who've directed films like starred in their own films like not really much cameos well maybe cameos sometimes star like like um you know martin scorsese cameoed in one long scene in taxi driver um kevin smith of course plays silent bob and clerks um yeah it's just all these directors you know like and and and, and he just does that so well just playing just playing the lead and it's just showing like him as young man as an old man just like the the bitterness that just went through him, just the, just all the money and the rich and the fame just all crumbled down, um, downhill. And then, you know, by the end of the film, like, they don't even know what Rosebud means. And, uh, and also this film, I, I, for my film reviews, I will be talking about spoilers. So, like, if you haven't seen his films, like, the, so spoiler warning ahead. Um, 
yeah, so like, of course, in the, by the end of the film, we found out, um, well, early in the film, when we first uh, see Kane as a young, young, young boy, he's like out playing this uh, sled in the in the in the west uh, on a snowy day with a family with his family who sells him to like Mr. Thratcher, who decides to take him away, become a, a successful businessman, and now uh, it's just young uh, Charles Foster Kane just playing with his sled and. We never see uh, much of the sled, really, uh, except covering snow. So in the end, the film, when the media is like, forget it, like we never know what Rosebud means. We get this nice, nice panning shot to like the fern to a furnace where they're burning all of of Kane's uh, valuables and just belongings. And we found out that um, Rosebud is the name of his sled. Um, so yeah, so like the name of his sled that he played with a kid, it was named Rosebud. And that's why, and that's and that's what Rosebud means to him. It's his sled. So I'm guessing what it means to the film, like at the end, like you know, he's been through a lot, and he just thinks of that small point in his life before all the fame and the money and the rich and the gals and the friendships and the business. Like he just thinks about that time in life and his kid playing with his sled, Rosebud, and that's why he says Rosebud. And then, of course, that's where the film ends, and just just so the film is so impactful like filmmaking wise um the soundtrack is great bernard herman one of the greatest film composers ever um it's just and the acting's so good like i believe the scene where um the from some cool trivia the scene where uh where um what scene was it oh it was a scene where um like near the end where he destroys everything in his like office or in his house and just destroys like all his like like glass and plates and stuff it turned it, that was all done in one take um and also the and then i watched this film in film class so so there was um there's a scene like midpoint in the film um that's infamous where um out of nowhere like a a, co a cockadoo uh this this bird just just appears out of nowhere in the film, just in between, in, right in front of the camera, and like that bit, and then, and then when I watched that, it just scared the shit out of me. I was like, "What the heck?" And I read that Orson Welles put that in the film be, to wake the audience up because it's a it's it's not a long it's not like long long like three hours like and like it's like it's it's the, it's reasonable long but like like because like no people complain like oh this film the film is slow and stuff like uh so like he put that in the film so he could wake the audience up so like just get their attention like it's like am i boring you was, like just put this burn just wake them up and and it kind of worked because like i was watching it and just scared me i was like i was like like jesus christ um i'm part of my french um yeah but or but citizen kane is such a great film um one of the best really like everyone it's like a, it's a must-see film like it's a I'm gonna say nine out of ten, like, cause like, it, it's 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 a great it's a great film. I love it. Um, Orson Welles does a great job, and just it just continues on his path as a director, and it's just it's just so good. It's just uh, there's nothing much to say really. Like, like the act, like it's just it, it's great. It's a great film, and I'm, I'm not bragging. I'm just I'm just saying like, it's just so it's so impactful to me. Because like it just it just was what cinema is. It just storytelling at it and directing and acting at its finest. And and this for the film got very big, you know, like a lot of impact in uh, in pop culture. Like on episode of the Simpsons, like they're talking about looking at all the movie props in the in the, like on the wall, and then Lisa's like, oh look, it's the cane from Citizen Kane. There wasn't really a cane per per se in Citizen Kane. I mean, technically, but not really. Um, of course, like I think, like um, it's just so it's just so many cool things about Citizen Kane. Like, like if you watch it more than once, like you'll find something new. You will find something cool, like foreshadowing. And again, the lighting is like when I was, I was the cinematography with the lighting. It's just so rich and just it's like a painting. It's almost like a painting. It's crazy. Um, yeah, but Citizen Kane, great movie. Love it. Must see. 9 out of 10. Um, and, uh, and that's pretty much it to say. Um, hope you guys like this. 
and um, see you guys for the next review. So, over and out.